Hello, and uh, today we're going to run through the the end of the war, um, and and why the war ultimately turned out the way that it did, uh, and then some of the major impacts of of this this first world war before we get to the big uh, peace negotiations in Paris. So first, uh, with these these last years of the war, we want to recognize that 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 enthusiasm for fighting the war is gone now. Um, all of the excitement and the and the and the fervor that existed back in 1914 was certainly wiped away as we got through 1916. Um, we've got regiments from the Austro-Hungarian Empire that are, are starting to, to um, mutiny, same as happening in France. By 1918, you've got uh, German sailors that are, are abandoning their posts. Um, you've got soldiers that are feeling this brotherhood with each other, but resentment with the civilian population that did not experience what they were experiencing on the front lines. Um, individual desertment, uh, deserting um, of, of their posts uh, is happening across uh, each front. So the enthusiasm that we saw at the beginning of the war is now absolutely gone. Uh, we're going to remember in 1917 with the second Russian Revolution, uh, bringing the Bolsheviks into, uh, into power in Russia, uh, we will have the removal of Russia from the war, which will allow those German soldiers on the Eastern Front to move to the Western Front. Um, but because of the American entry into the war and the German inability to break through those Western front lines, um, the German defeat was now going to be inevitable by the time we get to September of 1918. By November of 1918, the German high command is going to agree to an ultimate uh, surrender, an armistice agreement that stops the fighting and will move us on to the next phase in the war, uh, and that is the peace treaty. So as we discuss um, ultimately why this war ended up the way it's going to end up, we want to recognize the advantages um, that each side brought to the table. First, with regard to the central powers, Germany and Austria-Hungary and, and later the Ottoman Empire. They do have a geographic connection between their allies. It's easier for the Germans uh, to aid the Austrians in the fight, for example, than it is for the British and the French to get aid over to Russia. Um, Germany was, was more developed than, than any other country. They had a, they had a larger uh, industry and more advanced technology than other countries fighting in this war. The Germans had a superior army. Uh, their U-boat technology surpassed uh, that of other navies. But then the Allies did bring important advantages to the table as well, and, and nothing bigger than their access to greater material resources, especially from their colonies and from the shipping that they can get from the United States. The, the access to supplies from overseas is going to be a tremendous advantage for the Allies. And then just the, their manpower. Uh, Russia and France and Britain, their colonial empires, and then by 1917, bringing the United States into the fight, um, they have a manpower advantage that a stalemated war of attrition, remember that idea of a war of attrition, trying to grind your enemies down, when, when the Allies get the addition of the United States into this fight, it is a, a, an advantage that Germany and Austria-Hungary cannot match. So let's look at a few reasons why Germany ultimately lost uh, this fight. Right off the bat, the Schlieffen plan failed. Remember that, that seven weeks, or pardon me, six weeks that they had to defeat uh, France, get them out of the war and send all their troops to the east. Uh, that crumbled in the first weeks of the fight. Allied access to their colonies and overseas resources, a tremendous advantage for the Allies. The British blockade uh, that, that would uh, continue to limit the Germans from being able to get goods from overseas uh, is going to be crippling to the German home front, and it'll grow animosity to the, the German, of the German people against their government and against continuing to fight this war. The Central Powers just did not have as useful an alliance um, as, the, uh, as the Allies did, as the Entente Powers did. And then again, the addition of the United States at such a critical point in the war is going to be huge. 
Now, this war is the most costly war that has ever been fought. Um, over 10 million war dead, another 10 million civilian deaths. Uh, we, the, the world has not seen these kinds of numbers in one conflict and won't see them again well, for another 20 years. Um, these losses are going to be exacerbated by the Spanish flu, which is, is propelled around the world because of World War I. In 1918, um, soldiers from uh, fighting in this war will take the Spanish flu uh, to all corners of the world as they return home. And so you're going to see upwards of 20 to 30 million people around the world suffering and dying from the Spanish flu on top of those deaths from the First World War. The First World War brings many consequences uh, to all of the countries that were taking part in it. Uh, and first, we'll talk about economic consequences. Th this war is tremendously costly. Uh, the British and the French, for example, were taking huge loans uh, from the United States that, that are going to need to be paid back in the, the upcoming years. Um, Germany, of course, did not have as easy access to, to borrow money, certainly from a country like the United States. But as we'll talk about in, in later videos, um, the Germans are going to be economically crippled by this war as well. Destroyed lands, destroyed farms, destroyed industries, especially in North uh, East France um, and in Belgium, um, will cripple the economies of these countries for years to come. And then we're also going to see, and we want to recognize, a rise of the United States as an international economic and industrial power. The, the heyday of Britain being at the top of the economic mountain is going to come to an end, and the United States will replace them. With regard to political consequences, we want to recognize that, that we have some major changes to our map, which we'll talk about much more after we deal with the Treaty of Versailles in another video. But, but the French and, government, uh, French and British governments will, will remain largely stable going forward. They won the war. They're not going to have any kind of major uh, political upheavals. But we don't see the same from the losers in this war. Um, we see a revolution in Germany. Uh, in the, uh, the fall of 1918, with the Kaiser abdicating his throne and, and the end of the German Empire. We will see Russian revolutions that overthrow the Tsar in Russia and then later overthrow that provisional government that replaced him. We see a collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, an abdication of Kaiser, Wilhelm, or Kaiser Karl at, at the end of the war, um, and, and then a breakup of the, of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Again, we'll talk about that with the, the treaties uh, that we will deal with. We see an end of the Ottoman Empire, um, and, and later a, a new country on the map called Turkey. So tremendous political consequences. And again, we'll touch on those more in a later video. Some social consequences. The loss of life is tremendous, especially with young men, 18 to 39 years old, um, especially from countries like France and Germany and, and Russia. Uh, this will contribute to declining birth rates in the, in the upcoming years, which is gonna cause later um, guys like Joseph Stalin and, and Adolf Hitler to encourage uh, the, the Russian and German women of the 1930s to, um, to have many children to try to, to regrow that, that population of young people. We're going to see a rise in status of women as many women entered the workforce during the uh, First World War. Now, much of this is short-lived. As men will return from war, they're going to claim back their jobs. In fact, it was many women's patriotic duty, they were told, to give up their jobs uh, to these returning soldiers. Um, so, so that is a really quick run through the, the end of the war and some of the important consequences. And uh, stay tuned because uh, we're soon going to talk about the treaty negotiations in Paris, um, and ultimately the, the Treaty of Versailles. Take care.